Okay, hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Alright, we're going to be moving on to the last part of your development theories. I've already gone through core periphery model as well as your dependency theory in the past two videos, right? So, I'm not going to touch on that anymore. Okay, moving on to the last approach, okay, the last development, um, so to speak, theory, quote-unquote. Okay, it's known as the bottom-up approach. Right? A lot of you guys have already heard of bottom-up approach, be it in economics, be it in general paper, or be it in geography thus far. Okay, bottom-up approach is one of the best methods, all right, out of all these three um, development theories. Okay, the reason being is that it is something that, um, this bottom-up approach to development is something that okay, is actually practical, okay, is actually tangible, okay, and many countries have actually adopted it already, okay? So this is one of the best ways to think about development and to actually approach development from any sort of angle, okay, be it from the bottom, I mean, be it from um, developed nations or less developed nations, right? So what is the bottom-up approach? Okay, the bottom-up approach actually originated from the seventh special um, session of the UN General Assembly. Okay, I think this was in 1975, okay, somewhere around that period. Okay, what happened is that during this session, there basically a bunch of countries would come together um, to discuss certain things. Okay, and so what happened, this bottom-up approach was one of the um, topics that was brought up. Okay, and it was emphasized very heavily. Okay, whereby what this bottom-up approach basically is, it, it emphasizes the need for self-reliance. Okay, to be seen as central, okay, to be seen as the crux to all forms of development. Okay, and also stress on the internal moving forces, okay, rather than external forces of change. So bottom-up approach, as, it, as the word um, connotes, uh, I mean, um, connotes, okay, basically means um, bottom up. Okay, so you're working from the bottom up means you're, you're working from the lowest point possible in your development process. So things like working with the less developed um, locals, okay, or villages in the country. So, there was a need for development, okay, during the time when they discussed, okay, there was a need for development to be ecologically sensitive, which basically means environmentally sustainable, okay, as well as to meet the basic needs of all humans, okay, because every human has human rights, correct? Everyone deserves basic sanitation, they deserve basic needs. Okay, so this was one of the things that was stressed on and um, as well as the importance of public participation. Okay, so what exactly does public participation mean? Is that bottom-up approach, what it does is it equips um, the less fortunate or either that um, people who don't really usually have a say, okay, to actually have the power to contribute to something. Okay, for instance, uh, for instance, be in the strategy that is being implemented to help improve the lives of um, improve their lives. Okay, that anything that is basically has to do with them. Okay, they are given the power and a say to decide whether it is going to be useful, whether they want to make any improvements or whether they want to change anything. Okay, so it gives them that power that every human would definitely want to have. So an example of this bottom-up approach would be the wells and hand pumps in Africa. So basically what happens is that uh, an NGO from the United Kingdom, okay, basically came into Africa and what they did was they installed, okay, well, uh, these hand pumps, okay, and wells in Mali, Africa, okay. So this is kind of like what it looks like, this picture down here. Okay, so this is an example of a bottom-up development scheme, okay. Reason being is that this NGO, the non-government organization, okay, they train the community on how to actually use this system, Okay, and it also involved public participation. Okay, at the same time, it killed a few birds in one stone. Okay, because it not only equipped them with this um tech sort of technology for, to them is is quite high technology really. Okay, but it also allowed them to have access to clean water and basic sanitation. Okay, so then it, the this machine also allowed for easy repair of the water system and equipped. Okay, this NGO equipped the locals with the necessary equipment and skills to repair a faulty. So this is a way of empowering your locals. Okay, you give them the power, you give them basic needs at the same time. Okay, you fulfill both at both criteria at one at one time. Okay, but you give them access to clean water, but at the same time you do give them the power to fix it themselves. You give them the power to take part. Okay, and have a have a say. Okay, and and it's not things like um whereby the government has actually provided, but they get to provide for themselves their own source of water. Okay, so evaluation of this bottom-up approach, okay, there's a few evaluations, okay, because bottom-up approaches have certain pros and cons to them, okay, yes, indeed, it has a very, very long-term, sustainable, and very positive impact on many locals, okay, reason being is it focuses on your essential and basic living standards, which can go on for a long, long time, okay, when you have got such things like basic sanitation, basic water services, and you equip the locals with the knowledge and the know-how on how to actually help themselves, this knowledge will go a long way in passing on to different generations and being um, very, very lasting, okay, helping them to succeed okay, from the bottom up. Okay, and it's not only that, um, a lot of times all these initiatives, okay, they are very, very environmentally friendly. So it does have a positive impact on not only the social aspect to their development, but also the environmental aspect as well. 
Okay, so all these strategies usually address social needs. Okay, allows people to break out of this cycle of poverty because um they're equipped with better knowledge. Some of them can then move on to go and focus on other things like education, okay, and get out of this poverty cycle. And it does also help to close the development gap, all in all as a whole, okay? Okay, however, this may not be a priority of many governments, especially in your less developed countries, okay? For less developed nations, okay, your governments always tend to focus on economic growth or trying to develop the country from a top-down approach, which is from the government down to the people. Okay, so instead of letting other people come in to help themselves, you know, or letting your locals have the power to have a say, okay, that is not really um, very, very prevalent in these less developed nations. Okay, that's why there's a need for all these NGOs to actually come in and help the bottom-up approach happen, okay? Because governments themselves, okay, just in case you didn't know, okay, if a government does something for the people, that is known as a top-down approach, okay, from the top, from the government down to the people. If it's a bottom-up, it means that it's from the people up towards the nation or towards the government, okay? That's what it basically means. Okay, not only that, case, now these bottom-up approaches also take a very, very long time to implement and can definitely not be applied on a national scale. Okay, so there are very, very small little projects that cannot be um, implemented nationwide. Okay, it just doesn't really work that way. Okay, so then that's actually all we have for a bottom-up approach. So it's actually very simple. Okay, it just basically means that you're equipping um, your people with the power to actually make a difference in their life and to have access to their own basic needs. That's why you see it's such a good way of developing your um, society. Okay, so exam requirements, very simple. Explain how it works and how it's employed, as well as the benefits and limitations it may bring okay and then just compare with dependency theory and core periphery model of development if needed okay core periphery model and dependency theories uh theory is they are more of theories and models okay they are not exactly tangible okay they have not actually been executed before okay they are just basically observations made by certain professors certain sociologists certain economists okay whereas bottom-up development okay, is actually doable okay you can actually implement this in countries you can actually carry bottom-up development out and in many 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 different cases okay, just go and search online bottom-up development has actually worked for a lot of countries in bringing and helping a lot of people have access to basic necessities okay so that's why bottom-up development is such a good way of thinking about development for many countries and in fact more governments should actually consider this okay, because it's actually useful and it does help the people and help a country to actually develop Okay, so that's all I have for this video. Okay, if you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot as well. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below and I will answer them too. Okay, if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.